o'clock. And I'll talk about that more as we get deeper into this video. You know, Hogan thought that one of the most important fundamentals in golf was the grip. In fact, he devoted 19 pages just to the grip in his book, Five Lessons. Hogan detailed what the grip should be, how you should hold the club, and where the pressure should be in your fingers, your hands, and your forearms. Early in his career, Hogan's grip was stronger than the grip he later described in his 1957 book. Let me now show you the evolution of the Hogan grip and what it looked like. I'm going to start with the top hand, and, and he wanted you to start with that top hand so it didn't overlap or go over the back end of the grip. So you'd start it here, and one of his early drills to show you how to hold the left hand was to crook your forefinger and hold the club underneath the pad in this fashion, and you could see that you can hold the club quite easily that way, and he wanted your left hand to be a fingers and palm grip. So that was the little drill that he did to show you how to hold the club. Then you simply shut those last three fingers. The left thumb would fit slightly on the right side of the club. Now later in five lessons, he, he has you put the thumb straight down the shaft. But I would highly recommend for most of you to use his earlier description of the grip where the thumb is slightly over on the side and then the V that's formed between your thumb and the top of your left hand would point toward your right shoulder or between your ear and your right shoulder. That would be the correct positioning. Hogan originally had a grip that he could almost see three knuckles on his left hand. He also used a slightly longer left thumb. Now, these ideas that he had early in his career changed and he made two very significant swing grip changes that affected his swing. And the first involved the long thumb. He had played with a long thumb and as a result of the long thumb had a little bit of looseness in the top of his swing that he was always concerned about. He found that by pulling up the left thumb, drawing it up about a half an inch made a tremendous difference in the length of his swing. Now one big misconception that I've found from speaking all over the world is most people think that a short left thumb makes you have a longer swing and a long left thumb, since you could support the club better, would actually make you have a shorter swing. Actually it's just the opposite. Hogan was correct. When you suck this left thumb up, higher up on the golf club, it tightens up that wrist joint. You can try this yourself and you won't get as much wrist break at the top. And that helped Hogan shorten his swing somewhat and got that looseness out of the top of his swing. So if you have that problem, over swinging or have some looseness at the top, you might try that little change. The other change that he made was moving his left hand about a half an inch over to the left, this way. So he put the thumb more on top of the shaft with the move over this way and that weakened his left hand or put it more into a open face position and then he could only see about one and a half knuckles on his left hand. And this took out his tendency, he said, to occasionally hit a hook and it pretty much eliminated the left side of the golf course for him. So that was a tremendous change that Hogan made and some very interesting ideas right there. He just took a wall up about 300 feet down the left side of everything. His, his ball was never gonna go over that way and if it did, it would hit the wall and come down. He, he fixed that in his mind that he was not gonna go to the left side of all of the property, not just one hole, all of the property, all 300 acres or wherever we're playing, he would eliminate one side of the property to be on. And that was out. And he built his game on that, that he could go as hard as he wanted to at the ball and it was not going left. Now, when Hogan brought his right hand on, he said that the right hand grip was a little more complicated than the left hand grip because it had to come over top. And when he did it, he liked the right hand to ride high and come in this way on top of the left thumb. So this cavity or the lifeline here of your right hand would fit right on top of the left thumb. He spent a lot of time talking about how he did that and how he wanted the club held in these two fingers of the right hand, then simply shut. And he wanted that right hand to ride high. He wanted the V 
to point pretty much up to his chin later on in his career. And it wasn't far off from that even earlier in his career, maybe to the right ear. But he liked that club held in the fingers, felt that was tremendously important. A couple of other things about the right hand grip. Hogan used sort of an offshoot of the Varden grip. The Varden grip, the little finger, overlaps the left forefinger right here. Hogan thought it was much better to hook it in this fashion. And he wrote quite a bit about this. He wanted to feel some pressure in this little pinky against the forefinger, kind of pushing down against the grip right there to really secure the hands. Because Hogan wanted to feel like he had one corporate hand, not two separate entities working down here, but one hand so that it worked perfectly together. And he felt that that grip was much better than hooking it on top. Now let me tell you, there are a lot of top players that still use the Varden grip, hook it on top and there are many others that put it in here this way. Of course, there's an interlock grip that's quite close to what Hogan uh, was recommending right here. So that was tremendously important. Another thing that Hogan spoke about was the pressure in the right thumb and the right forefinger. And prior to putting the right hand on the golf club, he also wanted you to form this V and form it quite tightly so there was no uh, air, no width in this area right here of the right hand. He wanted that right together and he wanted that on there before you put the club, the uh, hands on the golf club. So it worked this way. Now of great importance was that he wanted no pressure on this thumb or this pincher finger, your forefinger of your, of your right hand. No pressure there. Very light. He explained beautifully how pushing down with the thumb and the, and the pinch your finger here, activated the muscles or the tendons in the top of your right forearm. And that really helped people come over the ball or used what he called the wrong muscles of your arms. So where you hold this golf club and where the pressure is put, back three fingers of the left hand and middle two fingers of the right hand, activate the bottom parts of your forearm, which is tremendously important and will help you a lot to swing better at the golf ball. So when he formed his grip, it looked something like this. This is more of the early look, remember. If you do tend to hook the ball or have the same swing characteristics that Hogan did, more rounded, you might well do better with the little weaker move with the thumb straight down the shaft. But for most amateurs, and I know at our golf schools, we would rather see that thumb a little bit over on the right side of the shaft and more knuckles visible, two or three knuckles visible on the left hand. And that will make it much easier for you to draw the ball and hit slightly more powerful golf shots. It was a very secure grip. That club was not moving at all. Um, and you know, when you watched him, you know, th those, those hands were there were a couple of vices there holding that club. You know, there was no, the, the fingers, and the way that he practiced, you know, he told, in the book, you know, the way that he practiced, uh, you know, when he practiced many times with uh, certain fingers off the shaft and in his practice swings, you know, very forcefully though, these three of the left hand and these two on the middle, on the, on the right hand, and he would, he would practice that way. To hold the club this way, he'd do this, you know, the exercises this way, and then he'd, he'd hold the club this way. Um, some pair of hands that he had. I'd like to say just one more thing about the grip. Ben Hogan suggested this drill. Take your right forefinger and your thumb off the shaft. Take the club up to the top and then just practice your downward move. This move right here and it would end up looking something like this when you start down. You've retained your full wrist cock from the top starting down. Your right elbow will return right to the, your side right here as, as Hogan suggested and you will feel both of your hands working together. It's a great feel. You'll have the sense that you could play without that thumb and the forefinger on the grip. I know Jack Nicklaus has said for golf that he didn't use the right thumb or the right finger at all. He had no pressure there at all. So it's a great little tip and a great reminder. Hogan suggested to put in one week of at least 30 minutes a day of practice on the grip. 
He said that the average golfer will enjoy the game a lot more. He will have the necessary equipment, the full vocabulary for golf. As I said earlier, no one can play good golf unless he has a correct and powerful repeating swing. A man or a woman of average coordination can build a good swing if he or she goes about it in a sensible way. Power and control must be combined with a good golf swing. The stance 